Hello everyone, welcome back to English and More. I am Shweta Roy, your English teacher. So uh, it has been a long time since I have met all of you. First of all, I would like to thank all of you for your tremendous support that you have shown me. Unfortunately, due to some personal commitments, uh, I could not record videos since a long time. But now guys, I am again back only and only for all of you, for all the love and support that you guys have shown me. So before I start with uh, today's lecture, I would first like to congratulate all the kids who have done amazingly well in their class 10th and 12th boards. Congratulations to all of you. So guys, uh, from this academic year, I would be teaching you all. I mean, I would be taking up class 12 CBSC. I would be starting with class 12 CBSC. Uh, because uh, I am involved into a lot of things right now so I would not be able to you know uh, deal with all the classes from class 9 to 12 so I thought of starting off with class 12 CBSC and gradually as uh, you know we would be progressing as I would see you all showing love and support to my channel to me I would be catering to other categories as well right so today uh, we would be starting off with keeping quiet the poem from grade 12 cbsc uh, this poem is personally one of my favorites because this is a very very thought provoking poem and so very apt in the modern scenario in the modern day to day life so uh, this is a poem by pablo neruda so i would like to i would like all of you to concentrate and be till the end of the video those of you who have not yet subscribed to the channel please do go ahead show your love show your support and definitely you would be getting the best out of out of you know this channel uh, that's a promise okay so please do subscribe to the channel share the video amongst your friends and don't forget to also hit the like button so let's begin with today's lesson, today's poem, Keeping Quiet. Now look at the title of this poem. You all can very well understand that this poem is about introspection because when we keep quiet for a moment, it's actually a meditative poem, right? Because when you keep quiet, you tend to look into yourself, you tend to meditate, you tend to think about a lot of things, right? In the daily rush, we often forget to actually be quiet, you know, be silent for a moment and think about whatever we have done, right? So this poem is about all of that. And as I told you, it's a very, very thought provoking poem and very, very relatable in your modern day life, right? So let us begin by first knowing about the poet Pablo Neruda, right? So he was actually a Chilean poet, poet, diplomat and politician who won the 1971 Nobel Prize in Literature. He was a poet when he, when he was actually 13 years old and he wrote in a variety of styles uh, like surrealistic poems, historical epics, political manifestos, prose autobiography and also not to forget his passionate love poems and uh, the collection of his passionate love poems is 20 love poems and a song of despair which was published in the year 1924. Now, he's not just a deeply personal poet, he's also vehemently political in his poetry, uh, which we will see, the instance of which we will also see in this particular poem. Now, he actively opposed the exploitative practices of big business, which a glimpse of which we would be seeing in the po poem that we, are, that we are about to read. Now, uh, Pablo Neruda is often considered as the national poet of Chile, and his works have been popularized. Uh, the Colombian novelist Gabriel Garcia Marquez once called him the greatest poet of the 20th century in any language. Also, the critique, the famous critique Harold Bloom, 
he also included Neruda as one of the writers central to the Western tradition in his book, The Western Canon. So that was about Pablo Neruda, right? Now we will move ahead with this poem. So uh, before you read, as I also already told you to think about the title. So what do you think the poem is going to be about? Of course, it is asking you to keep quiet. But there is a deeper meaning to it. Let us find out what is he trying to tell you. Okay, so now let us first read the whole poem and then we will do a stanza wise analysis. So I would request all of you to keep the text in front of you. That is very, very important. Let's begin reading the poem. Now we will count to 12 and we will all keep still. For once on the face of the earth, let's not speak in any language. Let's stop for one second and not move our arms so much. It would be an exotic moment without rush, without engines. We would all be together in a sudden strangeness. Fishermen in the cold sea would not harm whales and the man gathering salt would look at his hurt hands. Those who prepare green wars, wars with gas, wars with fire, victory with no survivors, would put on clean clothes and walk about with their brothers in the shade doing nothing. What I want should not be confused with total inactivity. Life is what it is about. I want no truck with death. If we were not so single-minded about keeping us, our lives moving and for once could do nothing, perhaps a huge silence might interrupt this sadness of never understanding ourselves and of threatening ourselves with death. Perhaps the earth can teach us as when everything seems dead and later proves to be alive. Now I'll count up to 12 and you keep quiet and I will go. So this was all the poem was about. Now let us understand the poem stanza wise and let us analyze and try to understand and interpret what the poet is trying to convey with the help of this beautiful and extremely thought provoking poem. Now this poem keeping quiet is about peace, fraternity and prosperity. As you could understand by the title itself, it is asking you to keep quiet. So quiet that means it is of course propagating peace. Now remember this poem during 1950s. It was a poem during 1950s and this was a period when the world had suffered a dead war and the poet had also experienced the repercussions of war. Therefore his appeal to peace. So this could also be counted as one of the anti-war poem, not directly, not, you know, explicitly, but yes, indirectly. Okay. So his appeal for peace definitely is showing that he's fed up of seeing human being killed and killing each other for power and money. So in this poem, the poet is asking us to keep quiet for a while and stop doing all the worldly and materialistic things that we are all engrossed into, especially in the modern day life. And think, think what? Think as in introspect. Think about ourselves. Think about the nature. Remember, nature is also getting exploited. We all know the powerful saying, nature has enough to satisfy man's need, but not to satisfy man's greed, right? So think about that, introspect about that. Our brothers whom we hate. Remember in grade 9th and 10th, we did poems like Fire and Ice, 
then we also did another poem um uh, which was about you know uh, universal brotherhood which which was of course titled as no men are foreign right so all those talked about thinking about war and why is war caused and is war, war is actually a necessary evil right and uh, fire and ice talked about how our uncontrolled unbridled emotions could lead to the destruction of the world right so all this is also talked about in this poem so the poet believes that in if we keep quiet meditate think introspect about what we are doing and what are the consequences what are the long term effects of what we are doing then we would perhaps be able to build a better world right now this poem is has been divided into five stanzas now let us see what is the poet trying to tell us in the first stanza so in the first stanza the poet says now we will count to 12 and we will all keep still for once on the face of the earth let's not speak any language language so here he's talking about how language you know creates a divide creates a barrier okay so let's not speak any language let's be quiet let's stop for one second and not move our arms so much now what is the poet trying to actually tell you through these lines so the at the heart of the poem is of course inclusivity the poem is the poet is trying to rise above the racial and linguistic differences not to speak any language so is actually trying to talk about the linguistic differences if we speak multiple languages that also you know uh, we have hatred towards each other due to all these differences right of race of language of caste of you know creed right of religion so he is asking us not to speak at all right the speaker employs the collective we we not i collection right so now we will count to 12 and we will all keep still so unity right now this count till 12 may be interpreted as signifying the 12 hour mark of the clock right uh because the hands of the clock that moves in a you know monotonous manner just like our daily life we are so involved in our daily life but at the same time it is so monotonous right so keeping quiet is as much about staying silent as about staying still not just silent we need to also say stay still right and that's why he says no actions don't move your arms too much so no action no words right so the use of words any language suggests that the speaker understands the limits of the language and then he envisions a world a state beyond the dom- uh, the domain of language itself that is the realm of silence so keeping quiet is actually letting our differences dissipate and then the silence will create similarity unity okay because silence is one language if we speak we speak in multiple languages but if we are silent everyone is silent that is that creates oneness okay so uh, the moving of arms not just harks back to the ceaseless movement of hands of the clock okay but also the gestures of aggression of restlessness and that is so very apt in the modern world so these are the points to remember uh, um, you know uh, 12 12 is the clock the daily life okay and then moving of the language uh, difference and moving of hands which suggests you know restlessness aggression okay so here the poet is talking about going into the realm of silence very important at the heart of this poem is inclusivity please make a note of all this so he is rising above racial and linguistic difference now stanza 2 says it would be an exotic moment without rush without engines we would all be together in sudden strangeness point to be noted is exotic moment without rush and that would be strange what else would the uh, uh, would the people do fishermen he's talking about nature here fishermen cold sea 
they would not harm the whales so nature man gathering salt would look at the arms would look at their uh, hurt hands okay so uh, this poem was actually published in his collection called extra vagaria okay uh, and that was featured in a later work of neruda's and had an over overall universal tone okay so uh, he is actually uh, talking about the hectic pace of the busy life that is why silence is e- is equivalent to an exotic moment because like the clock our lives also have become mechanical see the clock goes in one cycle monotonous that's monotonous same way mechanical same way our lives have also become mechanical right and it is dominated by what the rush the noise of the engines okay we are so busy we, we have a hectic life right so the pace of the poem notice how the pace of the poem this is very important because here the poet has used a figure of speech called anaphora and what is the uh, what is the purpose of the usage of anaphora in line number 8 without rush without engine now what is anaphora first of all when you have the repetition of the word first word in consecutive lines so without rush without engines these words without is repeated in consecutive lines so that is anaphora now this is a rhetorical device see here initially the poet is showing rush gradually to show slow down the pace he is using this particular rhetorical device okay uh, so so basically he is imagining a world without rush and that is a poetic master stroke where in the form of the content fuses into seamless unity right now the consequent moment of silence will not only be delightful and exotic but it will also be very strange because we have internalized the rush we have internalized the busy life okay to such an extent that if we are silent that becomes very awkward that becomes very strange for us very unfamiliar especially in context of the modern world so keeping quiet is a way a very powerful way of escaping the mechanical mechanized motion of the modern life right so uh, he was actually aware of the uh, history of exploitative colonial practice which was used by the european settlers um when they were trying to extract resources of the americans okay so he was uh, he was actually aware of he was that's why he was called the national poet of chile right so he was exploited aware of the exploitative neo colonialist practice and uh, he was uh, he also has written a poem called uh, standard oil company about all of this speaking against he where he spoke against the oil drilling practices of corporate giants which actually uh, posed a great threat to the marine life so he's also favoring nature here he's also be making us aware about nature so he was vocal about his support for conservation of marine resources and marine life so please note this you can also refer to this poem when you are writing an answer uh, when you are explaining these lines the poem is titled as standard oil company okay now man's greed as i told you ma- nature has enough to satisfy man's need but not to satisfy man's greed so that leads to the exploitation of other creatures and also human beings who are oppressed by the unjust economic system so neruda was he had raised his voice against this exploitative practice and he sympathized with the working class he understood the sufferings of the uh, workers in salt mines that is why he is saying that you know uh, they would be get they would be able to get time to look at their hurt hands okay and the sea creatures also in the ocean because they are harming the sea creatures okay so here we find the theme of environmental conservation and social justice very very important point to note okay environmental conservation and social justice stanza 3 those who prepare green wars wars with gas wars with fire victory with no survivor very important line 
would put on clean clothes and walk about with their brothers brotherhood okay theme of brotherhood in the shade doing nothing but again he says nothing does not mean total inactivity life is what it is about i want no truck with death very powerful line see what he is trying to tell you so uh, by uh, he is mentioning those who prepare wars so prepare wars by that he actually hints at the manufactured nature of war war is actually created to satisfy the specific interests of the parties but uh, uh, but on the other hand it destroys and devastates the life of the others okay so the damage which is done by conventional chemical and biological weapons green wars biological weapons okay wars with gases wars with fire they can be only stopped when the government and nation they try to teach uh you know governments and nations teach to keep quiet now as i already told you that neruda himself had been a uh, had had witnessed all of this he had been a witness to the atrocities committed during the spanish civil war under the regime of uh, uh, the dictator general franco okay so he had seen wars in close quarters and he very well knew what victory with no survivors looked like okay so even when it is victory in a war it is very ironical because Uh, although the nations you know one one nation might have won one party might have won but what about those soldiers who are who actually have to lose their life so is that victory actually a victory or that victory is very ironical so victory sometimes can have no survivors all of them have lost their lives they have they have you know uh, they are they are the martyrs but at the cost of losing their lives so significant is the uh, assassination of the writer and his dear friend federico gracia lorca by fascist forces that is also a point to remember so uh, neruda spoke about spanish civil war what did he speak about that as i told you he had uh, closely witnessed the spanish civil war he said the war began for me when my friends started disappearing a very poignant and powerful line the war began for me please note when my friends started disappearing so he is here we can see he is not at all supporting war he is you know writing an anti war poem so all people who prepare green wars that is they destroy green war is destroying the war uh, sorry destroying uh, the environment by cutting the trees you know deforestation polluting environment with factories etc then wars with fire which destroy and kill okay they have victory without survivors that means defeat uh, people defeat uh, the other party but at the cost of having no survivor okay so losing their lives so all those people will put on clean clothes instead of doing all of that they would be putting on clean clothes their clothes won't be soiled by the blood of their enemy so called enemy okay so uh, and and uh, they would be walking by, with their brothers in the shade of tree in the shade here means shade of tree because there would be no environmental destruction he's he's propagating uh, greenery he's propagating the theme of brotherhood so he would not people would not kill people would not destroy tree so if it, if they don't destroy tree what will happen trees will uh, you know build a canopy it would be uh, the forest would be rich you know and they would be uh, providing shade and people would walk with their brothers whom they have not killed okay so that is what he is propagating so here he is discussing everything that the that the poet i mean that people do uh because of their selfish reasons be it deforestation be it industrialization wars battles all of this are done because of uh selfish reasons so instead of doing all of this they should preach fraternity and love but again the poet says that 
um he, people should not get confused with total inactivity because total inactivity means death and he has nothing to do with death okay so life is what it is about that is we have life and we should live not fight right the poet says further that he is doing this because he does not want trucks loaded with dead bodies a very very powerful and poignant line once again stanza 4 if we were not so single minded about keeping ourselves moving very very apt in our modern day to day life and for once could perhaps a huge silence might interrupt this sadness of never understanding ourselves and of threatening ourselves with death so here he is talking about the monotonous rush of life which makes individual threaten oneself with death and their failure to keep quiet make nations threaten each other with wars so if we are not able to keep quiet not able to introspect so what will happen we are not just threatening ourselves but we are threatening other nations so silence which results from keeping quiet is an exotic one okay it is something which helps us introspect it is a soothing silence that can heal the self inflicted wounds of humanity so by inflicting others we are also inflicting ourselves right so that silence would help us heal those wounds right now the last stanza says perhaps the earth can teach us as when everything seems dead and later proves to be alive now i'll count up to 12 and you keep quiet and i will go here the poem ends on a positive note by saying that we can understand the importance of keeping quiet from nature these lines bring a very important fact that mere movement and rush should not be confused with life what we do today life what is life rushing for us life is rushing for life for us life means movement but mere movement and mere rush should not be confused with life this is the mistake that we had been committing we have confused movement with life okay so here we need to keep quiet introspect the difference between mindless movement and mindful living and this realization would help us appreciate life and that is the reason why the poet helps uh, asks us to realize okay before quietly exiting the scene because he says i will go right so before quietly exiting the scene he asks us to realize to introspect to understand the difference and he helps us uh, fully understand absorb and appreciate what it means to keep quiet okay so that was the poem keeping quiet by pablo neruda which speaks about silence and and stillness which are the central themes of the poem silence and stillness uh, and he has also shown an anti war attitude as i already mentioned uh, he talks about he has branded war as meaningless because it brings the illusion of victory of course victory is there but that is just an illusion because that is at the cost of a heavy cost of human life and then very important point a disapproving attitude towards utilitarianism that is a very important theme here that means he speaks against the materialistic approach to life that is very very apt in our modern life we have become very materialistic so he speaks against that so that is uh, disapproving utilitarianism so life is more about more uh, than achieving a certain checklist of goals in our modern life we think that okay we have a certain checklist if we achieve that then our life is fulfilled so we so that that's actually very very um that, that's very superficial i would say right so it is not, life is much more than that okay so it's not just a checklist of goals before death puts an end to us that's what the poet is trying to tell us right now coming to the poetic device uh first we will understand uh you know the first poetic device is metonymy 
where the poet has used metonymy in language okay so uh, what is metonymy first metonymy is a symbol or a sign which is used for the thing specified so here language actually stands for literature uh, sorry for culture or race so it is the symbol of culture and race that's why it's a it's a metonymy okay then arms we have a pun here pun is what the duplicity of sense is created okay so here arm stands for both okay uh, body this arm body and weapon arms arms and ammunition so that's a pun okay because we have a double meaning here okay then we have alliteration in sudden strangeness you already know what alliteration is repetition of consonants out at the beginning of the syllable okay in words closed closely you know placed so s is repeated same way his hurt hand h sound is repeated at the big and the repetition as at the beginning then the earth can teach us is an example of personification earth has been personified it is teaching us then we have metaphor uh where in these lines perhaps the earth can teach as when everything seems dead and later proves to be alive so here stillness that neroda advocates is being compared to the stillness of winter okay and then we have um, just like winter leads to uh, rejuvenation even the quietness recommended by neruda leads to regrowth see here what the poet is trying to tell us uh, perhaps the earth can teach us as when everything seems dead so everything seems dead is when during winter when everything seems dead and after that winter comes spring so rejuvenation so same way that is an extended metaphor actually so that is compared uh, so so when we keep quiet that stillness is compared with death of winter but that death leads to rejuvenation okay so our stillness will lead to rejuvenation and regrowth okay then we have symbolism symbolism a fisherman and whale stands for the oppressor and oppressed fisherman stands for the oppressor whale stands for the oppressed so as i told you about his economic uh, you know he was against that exploitative uh, practice so he was uh, he had sympathetic attitude towards the working class right and then salt gatherer is the symbol of humanity where clean clothes symbolize peace clean clothes again we have alliteration c is repeated rhyme scheme is not there this is a this is written in a blank verse so that was all about keeping quiet by pablo neruda i hope you enjoyed the lesson i hope you have understood the poem at depth you have understood the theme and also you would definitely incorporate this in your daily life so literature is all about uh and incorporating the values in our daily lives right so with that i would like to say goodbye to you until we meet next time with our next lesson very soon so please stay tuned to the channel and don't forget to hit the like button share this video amongst your friends and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet subscribed take care guys thank you bye bye see you